Hey, what's going on? Coach Luca back here from Big Round Fitness and Performance. We're back into like a coach's corner, educating on stuff that you can do within your training that's gonna benefit you, not only in improving your performance, but because this one is all about like recovery, because if you recover faster, you improve faster, and your performance improves. So this is something that was coined uh, rebound training by my friend Joel Jamison, who you gotta, I mean, obviously everything that he's doing on the side of conditioning is top notch. Check out eightweeksout.com. Um, he's got some phenomenal courses that go deep, deep, deep into this stuff uh, that I've studied and are phenomenal. But this is something that like, um, I, I, wanna, I wanna talk about like how this kind of intercepts with active recovery. You know, the whole point of like, for instance, you know, when you train hard, a lot of times there's the mentality is still like, listen, you got a tough training session, the next day you're not training, you're like, oh, I'm sore, I'm tired, whatever it may be, and you don't do anything, right? But the whole point of active recovery, that is active, you know? And, that kind of, anything in active recovery falls under things like, you know, walking, biking, hiking, swimming, um, body weight exercises, like lower intensity stuff. And I also, not just lower intensity stuff, like not doing it with gusto and high intensities, right? Uh, breathing, mobility drills, flows, you guys have seen. I do a ton of, uh, you know, videos on, on, on YouTube and that show actual flows that are my recovery flows um, because I, I feel so much better afterwards and it kind of fits into this and in rebound training, which we're gonna go into more depth today, right? Uh, and in things like yoga, stretching, Pilates, once again, you know, you can do some of those things and actually work really, really, really hard and your heart rates are, are high and then it doesn't become active recovery anymore, right? So um, think of like, you know, training sessions are about 30, 45 minutes long and you're somewhere in the 70 to 80% of your max heart rate. Uh, you know, so if your max heart rate is 200, that would be in the 140 to 160 range if it's lower than that. It's 130 and 150. Uh, pretty general, you know, general thing. I, I, I tell our, uh, I would say clients slash athletes, be in a 140 to 150 range when they're doing that. Um, but like I said, we try to make things uh, as personalized as possible here, also using uh, Morpheus, the Morpheus coach, Morpheus recovery, you know, the uh, heart rate bands and everything else. Uh, and things that also fall under this, you know, like stim units. Uh, I mean, that could go into depth into about other stuff, but stim units, because like I said, they create some activation circulation and so on and so forth. But the, what I really want to focus on today is on this rebound training uh, because it's, it just has, I would say, more structure to it. So not only am I gonna give you guys kind of like a little bit of a philosophy behind it, uh, but also kind of touch on every one of these components and then give you guys a little bit, little bit of a template. You'll, you'll actually see me uh, take uh, Luke Wilson through some of these things today through his rebound workout as he just had like two very high intensity sessions the two previous days before. Uh, so this is gonna be a rebound training to help him recover faster so that once again, we can hit it hard tomorrow. So, I mean, this is kind of like where, you know, uh, Joel came up with this when, you know, he was training a lot of MMA fighters and he started doing the HRV, uh, HRV monitoring. And what they found, because they, uh, they do a lot of, uh, I should say they do, you know, 20, 25 hours of training a week. Uh, but once they started monitoring the HRV, they found that like when they were swimming, right, which is obviously active, but it's, it's deloading, not only the joints, uh, the, the intensities aren't as high, that when they were doing swimming, they uh, saw increases in HRV, the heart rate variability, right? So that showed that like, wow, that when they're doing this, it ends up having, helping them recover faster than if they're not doing anything, right? So essentially, this, the, the whole structure rebound training over the years, you know, with, uh, I would say, not only scientific kind of like research and backing, but monitoring things like HRV and recovery, you know, kind of created this template, which is, you know, it's this, the rebound training is designed to help the body uh, move into a recovery state, right? And like I said, a lot of times, you know, it's just like a training session, right? If you smash a hard training session and just leave, go into your car, drive home, you're still stressed out, that's not helping you move into that recovery state. We want to move the body into that parasympathetic recovery state so it has the longest amount of time to recover and obviously rebound as fast as possible so that we can train, train it again to get that progress. It's about 30 to 45 minutes and includes everything from breathing drills, corrective movements, exercises slash mobility drills, uh, low moderate intensity conditioning slash cardio, and things like soft tissue work, right? So that's kind of all encompassed and it has this, uh, I would say, structure to it, which we'll go through in a little bit. What we wanna do is avoid heart rates and strength loads over 90% of max uh, and minimize eccentric loading, right? So if we are doing any type of lifting, uh, we wanna, minimize eccentric loading. So if you think about, you know, the squat down portion, the bench to down portion, any of that is the eccentric loading portion of it. That's what makes us sore usually. Like I said, it adds a lot more stress where the concentric, if we just do the concentric, 
Uh, you guys will probably see me do this. For instance, imagine a deadlift. I lift the deadlift and I just drop it. Just a concentric motion. Or a pin bench, right? I just, I bring it up and then I kind of do a control drop, right? I don't really use muscles to do that. So that's, that's the philosophy of it. And we kind of going to move through a couple of different, uh, I would say, segments slash steps. And the number one is we're going to breathe. And like I said, I'll, I'll later break down this, uh, this kind of model, why, why we're doing these things and what they're doing. Uh, but we're going to do breathing drills, specific breathing drills are going to help us move into, uh, help our autonomic nervous system move more into that, you know, rest and digest into that parasympathetic system. And also for most people, like I said, like they're high strung, they might have a lot of tension, we want to do that. From there, we're going to go to mobilize. We're not going to spend a ton of time there, but once again, like, you know, mobility drills, activation drills, corrective drills, uh, they're going to help that person, like I said, move better, feel better. And then from there, we're going to move, and this is going to be like lower intensity uh, conditioning cardio. I, I, I like to do a lot of different like movement patterns. I don't like to just do one thing, because this is going to be somewhere from 15 to 25 minutes, right? And I like to do, like I said, uh, it's not just like, hey, get on the bike and do this thing, but I like to do different things, like you know, the Jacob's Ladder, the bikes, the ski ergs, the multi-directional sleds, mobility circuits, med ball circuits, right? So we're, we're hitting a lot of different patterns, which especially for most people that are stuck in like, you know, sagittal, even athletes that are just one way, we want to get them moving as much as possible. It's going to be, uh, you know, we're going to get that, I would say, uh, increased movement variability. Um, from there, we're going to go to stimulate. And, you know, sometimes we'll leave this out, but I, I found this, and like I said, learned this from Joel, that uh, it's really helpful to do a little bit of like stimulate the nervous system, but don't bang it up. You know, two sets of two to three reps of 80, 85% uh, of a lift, but with just a concentric portion. Uh, this is great. And from there, we go to cool down. You know, cool down, maybe, like I said, some soft rolling, um, breathing again, some lighter mobility drills. And we go through the sequence. And so, what I'm going to do is like we're going to go into um, you know, showing you each one of these uh, with some kind of like, uh, I would say, philosophy behind it, how to organize it. And then I'm going to give you guys a template that you guys will even see me using, like I said, throughout the session with Luke. So now that we kind of, you know, went over the rebound training, let's just touch on like each one of these kind of segments and steps and why we're doing them and why it makes sense. Okay, so first we start with breathing. And, you know, breathing is very easy to be like, oh, you know, overrated. It's, it's absolutely not overrated if we understand, like I said, our nervous system, right? Because we, we start with breathing to improve two things, respiratory capacity. And you can say, you know, if you ask somebody to fully exhale and fully inhale, a lot of people have a tough time exhaling for a long time and inhaling for a long time because their respiratory capacity is not good. So we have to practice that, right? We have to improve that. And you know, you guys probably heard of maybe something like, you know, the Wim Hof method, Wim Hof breathing and the strategies behind it. There's a lot of different breathing methods and strategies, uh, you know, and here usually we're just looking at, like I like box breathing. Like I said, there's a lot of different protocols I will cover uh, with Luke. We went over box breathing, you know, five seconds out, five second hold, five seconds in, five second hold. Um, and just basically resetting that, uh, I would say, autom improving autonomic function, right? So if, like I said, if we can get long exhalations, our, our nervous system, parasympathetic system engages, which is our rest and digest, tissues tone down, right? Uh, we kind of, well, I'm gonna come back to this in a second, right? Because it develops more effective breathing patterns, like we said, but it also resets the autonomic nervous system before training. So think about this kind of like uh, scale, right? Like, it, it, sympathetic is fight or flight, you know, from you're stressed from the day, you're thinking about stuff, all the things you got to do, work, so on and so forth. I mean, obviously training too, parasympathetic stress and digest. Usually people come in and they're very stressed out. So we're doing a breathing drill also to kind of level out that autonomic nervous system, bring that tone down, get them in a better position to train. And a good recommendation is like two to three sets, five to 10 reps, AKA breaths, right? So either we do box breathing, we do positional breathing. Um, you know, guys see some drills of that as well. And so we start there. Number two, we go to mobilize. So we're gonna follow with about four to four to six mobility drills. This is like a general recommendation. Uh, sometimes we'll do more depending on a person, but that's a really good recommendation. 
and focusing on effective breathing. Again, when we're doing these, we want to make sure that we're exhaling fully, inhaling fully. We're not, you know, holding our breath, uh, you know, like getting to a tough position and hold our breath. We want to exhale. We want to own that position. And it shouldn't be more than eight to 10 minutes, you know, except for if we do it as a flow, which you guys have seen me do, where we're trying to go heart rate monitor status, uh, you know, kind of keeping an aerobic range and going a little bit longer. But in general, in a rebound workout, about eight to 10 minutes is where we want to go. An exercise should progress, right? So we start with like more single joint and we can start combining. We also progressed him with Luke. He's been doing this for, for a while, really improved his mobility. Uh, he's, you know, doing better with that. So we progressed him into multi-joint. From there, it's move. And that's basically moderate heart rate conditioning that drives both increased blood flow and nutrient delivery to the muscles. Um, so once again, we're driving recovery, we're rebounding, right? We're getting, we're getting uh, improvement in recovery without just like sitting around and not doing anything. Now, the thing is, this is where you do a variety of exercise. Uh, we're limiting eccentric, uh, there's eccentric opponent of drills, but I like movement variability, right? Because movement variability drives more blood flow to different joints, to different muscles. Uh, we're able to get out of patterns that people are stuck in. Uh, you know, Luke's, uh, like I said, football player. So we want to do a lot of different, uh, as you can see, there's Jacob's Ladder, different running and movement drills, and not at high intensities. Like I said, our heart rate here is going to be, you know, 140, 150 beats a minute-ish. Uh, multi-directional sled work, forward, backward, side, side. Um, you know, uh, today we didn't do it, but like we'll do multi-directional med ball drills, where the same thing is throws, throws, right? Like we're moving all types of components of our body. And so that's what we want to do in a move section. And we want to use loaded and unloaded movements so that we can target the full range of muscle fibers. So there's body weight movements, for instance, like you saw the, um, you saw the, uh, the Jacob's Ladder or him running and movement stuff, but also loaded sled movements. And here we could do things like loaded prowlers. Like I said, limiting the eccentric portion of it. Could even be a deadlift, just picking up, dropping, picking up, dropping, and keeping in those, er, in those ranges, right? And then last part, well, not the last part, last part's our cool down, but this part stimulates. So this is where, this is actually good because now you're like, hold up, it's a, it's a, it's a um, I would say a, a, a <laughs> rebound workout. I, was, I lost my th the train of thought right there, damn it. But it's a rebound workout. But like, why would we do exercises for lifting? Well, because we want to stimulate the CNS, but just enough, just stimulate it, right? So uh, through recruitment of high threshold motor units. So these are things like, uh, I said, motor units to turn on when we do something fast or do something pretty heavy. So we're going to use a load of, you know, a pretty good recommendation. Um, it's two to four sets of one to three reps at 85 to 90% of one RM, or in our case today, we just went at a pretty fast uh, tempo to produce more force, um, and so we did that of a one RM. All right, so that's a good, I would say, uh, example of that, but we're stimulating CNS, we're not burning out, we're not using anything with eccentric load, right? So like controlled squat, all of that stuff, we're not doing any of those. Um, but once again, from there, from the stimulation, we end up going down to uh, cool down, which would be things again like light foam rolling, breathing again, uh, light stretching mobility drills, getting in the parasympathetic before they leave, and it's basically rock and roll. And so here's an example. It actually uh, is a little bit of a template. This is different than what I, I, I did with Luke today, but uh, quadruped breathing on all fours for three, uh, you know, three sets of five to eight breaths, banded pull downs, arm bar with a kettlebell where we're, we're getting into the arm bar position and taking deep breaths and getting thoracic mobility. Uh, Spider-Man lun lunges with pails and rails. You will see me do that with Luke uh, today. Um, tempo intervals, oh, uh, ankle pails and rails, so ankle mobility drills. Tempo intervals, for instance, here for five minutes. Prowler push for high intensity conti uh, continuous training for five minutes. And then we'd go into uh, deadlifts and push-ups, which we did with Luke, and then recovery cool down. So you can kind of see a bit of a template there. Uh, you can also see kind of what we've did that's very similar. We kind of move through these sequences of breathe, mobilize, move, stimulate, and then he did another breathing of cool down. So that basically that's your template. And like I said, on, on days where you want to recover and you want to rebound from hard training sessions, like this, use it, trust me, you're going to be better off, you're going to recover fast, you're going to feel better, and you're going to work on a lot of stuff, like I said, that most people need to work on. Uh, with that said, hey, Coach Luca delivering some more knowledge you can apply into your training to make you a better person, client, athlete, all of those good things, and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.